Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my Modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue looking at stream-based I.O. Now again, we've talked about stream-based I.O. in the previous lesson, so make sure you check those out if you haven't previously. But today I want to go ahead and just emphasize what Cout is and look at some of the member functions that we can use with stream-based I.O. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at our favorite website, CPP Reference here, which looks like it's actually updated recently. But that's okay, we know how to navigate it or use the search. But what we can do is just go to input output because that's what we've been working on. And again, previously we've looked at print-based functions, which are the new C++23 way to do it. But again, if you're on an older system, stream-based IO is useful, as well as the streaming functions are very useful for things like, well, literally streaming in data. So um, if we're wanting to build some sort of interface, for instance, where we're sort of reading in or piping in data, the stream-based uh, IO library functions can still be relevant, as well as for piping, redirecting, and as well as what we'll get into later, so make sure you're subscribed, reading in input, for instance. Uh, so we still want to understand the stream-based IO library, and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, again, some of the different functions that are available. Now, what I want to go ahead and do today is let's go ahead and take a look at uh, o stream here. So let me go ahead and just do a search for it here. Um, because this is, just as a reminder here, uh, the uh, interface for which things like Cout are implemented. So again, if you haven't caught in the previous videos, Cout, uh, Cair, and Clog, and then the wide character versions, again, are just global objects that are defined to, well, like most processes when you run, you have a standard out, somewhere where you're writing information out, that's usually what you're reading from your terminal, standard error for handling uh, errors, uh, and again, we talked about this in a previous lesson that's unbuffered, so you get the feedback right away. Uh, and then C log here, uh, which is, uh, I believe, a buffered uh, output as we've discussed before. So anyways, let's just go ahead and look at C out. That's where I wanna go ahead and focus today. Um, and just look at some of the member functions, because again, um, when most of us have probably written our latest, or, or I should say our first C++ program, or even today, uh, we probably did something like this here. And I just, again, want to emphasize that if we run this program here, uh, so again, I'm going to compile it with C++23 here, and then just run the executable, right? This gives us our little hello world with an end line. Uh, and of course, you maybe learn about other things like, for instance, standard uh, end line here, which inserts uh, an end line and flushes our output. Um, but it's important for us to realize that, again, this is just basically a operator overload here. So we can equally do something, for instance, like C out and then do dot write. And then let's just go ahead and write out hello world with this. And I'm also going to have to compute the size of, with the write function, how many characters there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then this counts as a 12th one. So let's just go ahead and put that here. And we should see hello world twice here. No problem here. Uh, and of course, we get the end line because you can see my terminals here. So this is pretty much an equivalent way here. Now, of course, with the Op, um, the operator overload here, that is the stream operator here, which I've highlighted, this allows you to do things like to easily uh, kind of compose and send in uh, multiple values here. Uh, and in fact, you can also do things like, for instance, let's say we're writing out some value here, like one, two, three, four, but I could write that out with a hex to change the sort of output form and modify it. Uh, and then you'll get uh, different values here. Now, of course, if I want this to work here, let's write this out as a uh, integer value here instead of a string here. Uh, then we'll actually see the hex value uh, appropriate here. So again, there's different reasons to have uh, both versions here, but I think showing it in uh, this way, let's go ahead and leave it like this, uh, again, just emphasizes that this is just a regular object. This is a global object. Uh, that's available. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at uh, C out here. Uh, and we're going to focus on C out, not the wide character version, but you can play around with that if you're using uh, different sort of alphabets here. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and look a little bit more at C out. Um, but I'll actually back up for a moment here because there's nothing really in this page here. And since it's implementing uh, what's in our basic O stream here, we want to look at these member functions that are uh, available here. So we've just looked at write here, which inserts a block of characters here. Um, again, basically just outputting the characters in successive location from a character array. Um, and it just needs a uh, the characters and then the count for how many we want to write out from this pointer here. Now, if I just pass in a string literal like this, this is fine here. Uh, but we can also do other things here like const char star uh, string 
uh, literal equals, you know, Mike, something like that here. And let's just go ahead and uh, do the same example here. And I'm just gonna put in the string uh, literal. And since this is allocated on the stack here and we know uh, its exact size, I should just be able to do the size of uh, string literal. The string literal should have the null terminating character uh, on it, so we shouldn't have to worry about it. We might wanna put an endline character after it though, just for the sake of printing. So let's go ahead and do that and run it. And we can see Mike is printed out here, okay? So again, that's just where the, uh, the character type here and then the size here uh, comes from. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at a few different uh, other things here uh, that we can do, and maybe we'll revisit that in a moment. Uh, we could just actually put out uh, individual characters here. So let's all go ahead and use standard cout uh, puts here, and I could just put uh, one character at a time here. And again, this could be useful if you are emulating um, or wanting to do, you know, just one character at a time here, or maybe emulating some sort of system call here. Uh, and again, you can just write out the characters individually. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what I was exploring briefly here with something like writing out um, hex here. Let's, let's go ahead and just look at a few more uh, of the member functions here that are part of the state here. Um, so you can query what the sort of state is of your IO here. And this might depend on, you know, the type of application that you're building or what level you're building at. Uh, but basically you have a bunch of these member functions that query the state to see if you're in a good or a bad state. Uh, things like if you're at the end of the file that you're writing to uh, and so on here. Uh, the one that I'm particularly going to be interested in are the member functions under formatting. Uh, so sort of understanding the state here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at these flags here. Uh, and basically what the formatting flags are, are things like if you want to write out things in hex, for instance, or control the alignment. Uh, and now why these are sort of interesting to take a look at here is because uh, one, of course, we want to do sort of the C out and control how you write out some values. So let's go ahead and do C out, for instance. Um, and let's go ahead and do uh, hex. And let's go ahead and write out the value 12. And then let's go ahead and write it in uh, oct and also do the value 12, and then we'll just put an end line. Let's go ahead and see what that writes out here. And you can see we get the value C, uh, and then in, in oct, this is gonna be 14. Uh, sorry about that, let's go ahead and <laughs> let's put an end line uh, in between these just so we can understand uh, the difference just a little bit more clearly. Uh, oops, let's get rid of that semicolon. Uh, so you can just, anyways, you can see the value C and 14 here. Uh, that are being uh, written out here. Uh, but again, that controls uh, our sort of state here. Um, so something that you might wanna do is actually have a way to sort of change these flags here or get the state here. Um, so that's what the flags is. It's actually going to just store that. I don't know if internally it's just using some sort of like bit mask or something. Uh, that's probably how I would uh, set it up here. Uh, but you can see their options. I mean, a common one that folks often wanna do is just write a value as true or false. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do a, a, a bool uh, value equals true, something like that here. Uh, let's go ahead and write out that one here. So do C out. Uh, and then let's go ahead and do standard bool alpha value uh, and end line. And I'll make that a little bit bigger in a moment just so you can see it. But you can see that it's just going to print out the value true here. Um, so how do I sort of reset uh, these flags here. Um, well, something that you can do actually, uh, just to make this a little bit easier here, right? You have this format flags uh, sort of object that you could do is I could just actually store this as like uh, get flags here and then see out dot flags here. Okay. Uh, and that'll actually return my flags um, of my current state here. So if I haven't set anything, this might be some way to get a default back, for instance. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this line here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is then I'll go ahead and restore the state for my flags. So I use this first one to retrieve the state and I'm gonna pass it in as a parameter to this second overload here to uh, set the state here. So I'm gonna call on C out here because that's my current stream here, uh, flags, and then I'm gonna pass in uh, whatever my flags are. And then you'll see we have one version um, uh, oops, actually, I got a, a little copy and paste error. Let's get rid of this here. There we are. <laughs> Just write out our value here. Uh, but now I'll actually see one version that writes out the true because we have reset or modified the state. 
and then we restore the state of our flags and then we uh, just get a one here which represents the uh, value of our uh, boolean value here for true okay so those are a few of the member functions that we have here um, let's take a look at some other things here that might be interesting here um, let's see what we've got here I think the other interesting one that I want to show you again here's the format flags if you want to you know set this up with an object here uh, and I think you can do this with just a bit mask and again this might be useful for like writing out floats or if you have different like scientific uh, applications and you want to write out in a specific notation like if you're building a calculator app or something that might be useful um, there is one other thing here I'll show you here our debuff here uh, which manages our associated stream buffer. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Uh, and we're going to sort of use a similar trick that we did with the uh, flags here. Uh, but basically, we can return the associated stream buffer um, that we're writing out to. Uh, so what does this mean exactly here? Uh, well, what I'm going to go ahead and do here, uh, and we are going to talk about uh, file access and writing out uh, data here. Uh, but I am going to need uh, fstream here uh, for file stream here. And basically what I'm going to do here for this little example is create a little uh, output file stream. And these are the types of things, again, you'll find uh, we'll start getting into here. Uh, I'm just going to call this output for now. I'll call this output.txt, uh, something of that nature here. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I want to capture the original C out uh, buffer here. Okay. Um, so what that means is I want to go ahead for uh, see out here. I want to capture our debuff here. Okay. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and make this a little bit uh, bigger here. Uh, and again, this is the stream I'm associated to. So I don't really have any other way to, you know, get uh, standard out here. So I just want to kind of hold on to it um, in this object here. Now, what's the actual type here? Uh, you know, this is the type here. Again, I'm just going to use auto here. It's a little bit easier here. I know some folks want to see the uh, full type, but uh, here it is. It's just going to be some basic uh, stream buffer here. Um, uh, and in fact, that's what the CPP reference uh, is using. So I'm going to actually go with that as well here uh, for the stream buffer. Okay. So again, what this is essentially holding here is uh, standard out, which again is just a sort of uh, file handle to wherever we're writing out to uh, on my Linux system, which is standard out, and that's the output that you're seeing in my terminal here, uh, as we've previously discussed. Okay, so now what I can actually do here uh, is now I can use this C out here and sort of redirect where I'm writing things to. Uh, so I'm going to change the R debuff to my output, that's this one right here, uh, to its uh, buffer. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just you know, use uh, C out here. And we can use any of the techniques that we've learned about. Let's just go ahead and write uh, Mike here, for instance, with five characters. And that should write out to this file here, uh, Mike here. So we should have output with Mike here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it and see if that works here. Um, now again, importantly though, if I do want to uh, restore my original C out buffer, again, uh, let's make sure that we do that here. Uh, let's go ahead and basically just do the same thing here. Uh, original C out buffer here, and then I'll write, okay, back to normal. Okay. And let's go ahead and do an end line here. Okay. Um, so what I'm basically going to expect here is have a file called output.txt here. Uh, I'm writing Mike to it through C out, and then we should hear or see on the terminal back to normal. Uh, printed out, but we shouldn't see Mike. Again, that's just being written to the file here. So let's go ahead and try this out here. Looks like it compiled. I see back to normal here. If I output uh, my file here, we can see there's one line here for Mike. Uh, so it looks like things are working uh, just fine there. So again, we have a lot of power here if we want to, you know, redirect um, you know, uh, which which buffer we're actually writing to with C out. So again, this could be kind of useful if you're logging, if you want to implement your own version of uh, C out, if you don't want folks to see what's going on um, on a terminal, right? You want to manage these buffers. Again, you've got these member functions to hold onto things. Um, and that's where the rest of these sort of query functions are kind of useful if you want to see like if you're in a good state or a bad state or, or these sort of uh, different uh, things here. Uh, and again, there's different ways as shown with the format flags that you can store this state and restore it uh, again if you want to play around with that. 
So let me go ahead and just show you the code one more time here, uh, just on a full screen here, uh, just in case you missed anything. Let's just go ahead and make it nice and big for you. Uh, so what we learned today is about doing IO stream um, and using the member functions. So with our global C out object, again, this is going to be the same with C air and so on. They're just global objects, but we have many, many, many different member functions that give us you know, direct control. So we can do things beyond uh, just using the uh, overloaded uh, stream operator. But again, the overloaded stream operator is very useful if you want to sort of compose these operations together and do things like this. Uh, so we looked at a few things with the flags. Um, how to uh, restore state here by holding on to the actual uh, original states here, how to redirect our output, and uh, so on here. Um, there are a few other interesting member functions if you do want to play around with these. Uh, like, for instance, uh, there are functions like, let me see, there's like uh, seeking, so you can kind of move around uh, the actual file stream. Uh, you can return the position. So again, these can be super, super useful because remember, our streams are just literally buffers sort of holding bytes. Uh, so you can play around with these. We're going to look at these functions. I think they'll be more useful to look at with uh, doing different file output, for instance. So I'll save those for later. So anyways, folks, that's it for this lesson. We've looked at some of the member functions in basic OStream or C out as we uh, sort of recall things. And as always, if you're finding these lessons useful, feel free to check out my courses at mshot.io. You can check out a full introduction to C++ or the series that we're following here. Uh, it's totally free to enroll if you want to just track your progress in a more uh, distraction-free environment, or I should say uh, uh, an environment with less distractions and pop-ups and so on. So you can remember uh, or check back if you've watched all these videos. So anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know what you think about these functions, if you've used them for anything interesting, if you've actually built some abstractions on top of this. These are some things that I will occasionally see folks who are building large you know, infrastructure projects want to have control over, especially sort of redirecting which streams you're writing to uh, and not using C out directly for error handling purposes and these sorts of things. So anyways, folks, with that said, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.